I doing? Right. Good. 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 Right. So you you were the coach today, huh? You, you, were you prompted to speak up? Or you volunteered it or what? Uh, I just volunteered. I mean, those guys are like family anyway, so it's our room is really open to ideas and whatever anybody has to say, we listen up. Yeah, but you ha you have a lot of experience that you can impart on these guys, right? You feel that's a, a role on this team for you to to be uh, somebody to bounce things off? Yeah, I would definitely say so. I say me personally, I'm not necessarily going to be like a rah-rah loud dude, but I'm going to pull somebody aside and get them <clears throat> back on track. It's always the little details, I feel like, that a lot of people overlook when it comes to winning a championship. Like, a lot of guys, when you get to the college level, everyone can really run the ball and catch the ball well and throw it far. But at the end of the day, you could have a really well-talented, well-rounded team but if they're not disciplined and sticking to their rules every play throughout the game, there's going to be slip-ups, and you're going to lose the teams that have less talent. So I'd say the first thing I try to instill is the details, man, like, and just overworking, like, in a positive manner. Like, you got to love the game at the end of the day. So if you, if you love the game, you're going to want to be around it pretty much all day. So it's just going to only improve you from there. Now, winning a national championship, I don't even know if some of your teammates are aware of that. It's something I would probably announce to everybody, but have they figured it out? <laughs> uh, I mean, sure, when I got here, I didn't really say much about my background. I mean, if people knew, they knew. But, um, yeah, some guys know, like Coach Mary, he coached at Elon and JMU, so he's been in that realm of football. JMU, uh, we played them before I got there when Trey Lance was there, and that was like that close game. And Coach Mary was coaching the running backs at the time, so he definitely knows about it. Yeah. The Bison, but I would say, like, as of background, it is what it is. It speaks for itself. I don't know how warm it gets in North Dakota during the summer, but probably not as warm as down here. You ingested? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'm from Tampa originally, but <laughs> it true. was, it's still like coming back because yeah. once I went up to North Dakota, I was just North Dakota, Arizona with the baseball deal. So I never really came back to Florida. So it's been like three years. Since I've been back, and this is my first summer back here, yeah, it's all right. But your, your, your family, you've got a, quite a collegiate quite a history in the state of Florida between FIU, mm -hmm. your brother here, and also at Florida Gulf Coast. How neat is it for you to be now a collegiate athlete in the state of Florida, particularly where your brother was? It's incredible, yeah, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, being around here with this indoor, which is insane, because I was here when I was real little, you know. My brother was playing the games, and uh, just growing up, like, I was at the facility a ton, watching my brother, watching practices, watching games and stuff. And like as a family as a whole, this place is it hits home because this is the closest school I'm, I live from growing up. So mm -hmm. I used to watch the with Quinn Flowers and stuff. I used to go to those games at the Buck Stadium and watch those. So mm -hmm. it's it's a great honor to be back. I'm not I'm happy about it. You of course went to high school very close to here. Why North Dakota State? What was the lure that took you up there? Um, I mean, my whole goal my entire life, I've been playing football since I was four years old and baseball since I was three, <laughs> like starting with T-ball and stuff, you know. So my goal in general was I wanted to be as great as possible. I, I, I want to win. So I knew what they had going on over there. And coming from a military background with my dad and stuff, that program is very militant or how they run things, you know. There's not much. It's very strict and it's very, like, on point, get your stuff done. If you don't, there's gonna be consequences, but we'll get it right. Mm -hmm. It's a family atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So that drew me to it. And then obviously winning championships and the, the chance to go to the NFL, I didn't, I didn't care. I was like, whatever it takes, I'm gonna go try to go to the NFL. And you've, you've, you've struck a balance between football and baseball. I know 2021, correct me if I'm wrong, but you had the spring football season, then it was off to the complex league, mm -hmm. and then it was back to football in the fall. That, that must have been because you know, like 2020 obviously was cut short, so everything was so compact. Yeah, what was that like for you? Was, <laughs> it's okay. a back and forth. I mean, it's a lot of flights, it feels like. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, I had the 2021 20, year was even more because I went out for spring training for only like a week and a half, two weeks, then came back for the spring football season. And you're in spring training in Arizona where it's hot, and then you go back to spring football season and there's still snow on the ground in North wow. Dakota. <laughs> so you finish yeah. that out and then uh, head right back out for the summer ball. I mean, it's, it's a lot, man. Mm -hmm. Technically, you don't get a break, but for me, 
I, it's all I would do anyway with my spare time. Just go back to your father. Which branch was he? Or is he? Army. So he's he's retired now. He was a Green Beret in the Army. Is so, that right? Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think he did 21, 23 years, something like that. No kidding. Retired when I was nine years old, eight years old. So after he got out of FIU, where he played, he was baseball. At FIU, yeah, he right? did. Uh, my mom did soccer yeah. at FIU, and my dad played baseball there. And um, he started at Florida Southern and then transferred to FIU. Oh, okay. So then um, after ball, he got into the military, and then they had my brother, and I came next. So. <laughs> yeah, I thought that. I was going to ask when that, when you're going through all that in one spring, 21, what's tougher, but and football's way tougher than baseball. You would think so. I would say they're polar opposites, man. Right. Like, it's it's crazy. I mean, obviously at the pro level in baseball, you see some freak athletes, like real, like big type dudes. And then you see like the Jose Altuve's who can still hit the ball 400 feet. So it's like, in the end, it's it's a mental game, man. Like, yeah. Football is very mental as well, but it's overly physical. So it's just, a, it's a 180. You go, you still prepare and try to stay healthy and make sure you're explosive and stuff in the baseball field, but it's all mental. You could be a Aaron Judge, but there's probably a hundred other Aaron Judges that couldn't make it just because of the mental aspect of the game. Right. So what was your injury in 2021? Because you it was about halfway through the regular season, the fall season then. Mm -hmm. What was the injury? I had a sports hernia. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you missed the playoffs then, right? Uh -huh. that, okay. Yeah. That must have been frustrating. Yeah, That's, it was frustrating. Mm -hmm. I mean... But yeah, it was frustrating. Um, that I had, I fought through kind of some injuries there, and just played through it. So, in the end, I got to get the chance to have surgery and get it fixed, which okay. was I'm happy about. Like, right. it was a nagging injury for me for a while. So, yeah. And then when you, you entered the portal, was was USF was that was USF on your radar? Yeah, when you I mean, decided to transfer. I'm sure there were other schools that you would consider as well. Mm -hmm. I would say I wanted to go back south, like. The cold was getting to me a little bit. <laughs> I was like, if I'm gonna transfer, I want to go south at least. So, but yeah, I had a few other interests, um, some northern, like, and then uh, like a lot of southern teams too. But like Tampa is my home, and then growing up, I want this team to be great, man. Like, mm -hmm. And I saw Coach Golis and met Coach Golis, and Coach Merritt's incredible. So I mean, I've seen nothing but great coaches, and the guys that they brought in, and the guys that were already here. Like, we're just missing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the the goal is to flip it mm -hmm. and head out of here on a high note and just build it back up, man. Tampa's a great city. Like, we could really pack out that that big stadium, the Buck Stadium. Like, and it just brings just more and more to the city. And it's a positive. You were, what, what's next for you, baseball? I mean, obviously, I know everything's football right now. Mm -hmm. I get it. But what's next for you, baseball? Because I know you were released last month, or just a week ago, right? Or yeah, like yeah. What might be next for you in that sport? Um, I would just get back into it. Right now, I'm thinking uh, I had a pretty good season last season, mm -hmm. so I'm not really stressed on as a, finding a team. Sure. So I'll be fine on that aspect. It's more so like right now we're going to go all in on football. Mm -hmm. And if I get drafted with football and stuff, I'll probably just take it with that route. And then if not, I'll get back into the baseball scene and see where that takes me. You earned academic honors as well at North Dakota State. If you could talk about how important the academic picture is to you. And is that something that might have been stressed by your parents many years ago? Yeah, always. Yeah. Yeah. Always. My mom was an English teacher, actually. So she taught at my middle school and my high school. Okay. So my, senior, my junior, senior year, she taught at my high school. Okay. So... Um, yeah, it's huge. My brother's very, very smart. I mean, he's in law school right now at ASU, and I always try to catch up with that. It's, it's hard to compete. He's with. where? Arizona State? Yes, so, Okay, that's, uh, how many siblings do you have? Just him. Yeah. Okay, okay. Three years old. He's three, okay, okay, mm -hmm. great. Um, Does your mom teach you in high school? No, okay. no. They weren't like that. They okay. think it's privilege, yeah, man. I'm like, dude, if I did that, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I would take it. What, what, what classes are you taking? Uh, right now, I'm a management communications major, so it's a lot of communications, a lot of English, a lot of writing stuff. Presentations are huge, too, as well. So I like to get into that and see, like, if I wanted to take the business route, being able to sell things and really communicate a product is my, my idea of it. Okay. And where are you as far as your undergrad when you'll have that completed? Uh, fall. Okay. Okay. Great. You have two seasons of eligibility, right? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Um, you were born in Kentucky, though, right? So yeah, you know, as I know, so like you know how it is with the military. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how old were you when you did the family moved to Florida? I was six years old. Six years six old. Six or okay. seven, yeah. Okay. And then we were here for like three years and five or two to three years. My dad uh, retired here. Yeah. Do you do you have any um, favorite athletes or athletes you really admired? Maybe not because of what they did on the field of play, but maybe away from it or anything like that. Over time. As a youth, somebody you really looked up to, perhaps? Yeah, I would say, I could do two. I mean, I would say I watched Ryan Howard a ton, but I also liked Derek Jeter a ton, just as of the aspect of being a leader on the field. Like, he was a great player, obviously, but the leading and getting the team to the championship caliber was really what I saw from the baseball aspect. And then football, I mean, I like Adrian Peterson a lot. I mean, yeah, just the way he runs is ridiculous. So growing up, I feel like a lot of dudes in my era, like were real AP fans. So now with the complex league, did you? Is anybody there? You know, maybe some of your coaches that you you really liked too, and maybe you mingled with a couple of top draft picks over the last couple of years, particularly spring training. You know, yeah. Anybody you'd like to cite? Man, I've met a ton of dudes out there, big leaguers, like guys who've been playing in the league for 15 years high draft picks who just got there, like, it's incredible. Spring yeah. training is amazing, because yeah. everyone's just together. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you could be playing on the big league stadium one day and go right up to the backfields and get after it. But uh, I'd say specifically, I met one dude that really stood out to me, Drew Jones. Yeah. I just met him this year. Yeah. He's a really great dude. I mean, yeah. he loves the game, and I feel like that is just going to – he's already extremely talented. So. That would just skyrocket him. As a young guy, that would be one of the dudes I really messed with that I liked a lot. And then um, as an older dude, uh, we had Stone Garrett. You know, he's not a big name, but he had a crazy story. So he was in the minors for a while, ended up getting released, and did real estate for four or five years. All of a sudden, he calls his agent and said, hey, I want to play ball again. Comes back, starts him in AAA at the Diamondbacks, and now he's starting. The Nationals. Yeah, yeah, now he's with the yeah. Nationals. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, exactly. Where in Kentucky did you remember where you were born? It was a base, man. Okay. Forget the base. Was that Fort Campbell? Yeah. It was Fort Campbell. Yes, okay. that's exactly it. Yeah. And yeah, the connection is not like a Florida Southwestern school. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 My dad's got some good baseball stories there. Oh, he, right, was yeah. at, he was at Chipola as well. Okay. So in Chipola, Florida Southern, FIU. Okay. I've been there when I was there. I could just think of it. Yeah. He, I guess he, you and him, would, and your mother as well, maybe you would come here and see him quite a bit, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. that, it must have been pretty neat. Yeah. yeah. Is uh, training camp toughest on particularly the offensive linemen? <laughs> Whew, that's a good question. Uh, I say when we're outside, yes, 100%. Because, you know, you got the heat, you got, we're always banging, you know, having collisions, um, even if we're not in shoulder pads. Um, but I say, yeah, for sure. How, um, strenuous are the collisions or when do they start getting serious or is it always serious? They're always serious, especially like when we're in like a team setting, um, that's when it gets serious, you know, because you have to go full speed to give the other guy a look and vice versa. So, you know, we're always going full speed and every play is really a collision, if you're asking me. Obviously, it's something that you've done your whole life, not your whole life, but your whole football life, but that first pop of contact <laughs> is yeah. it like a jolt like here we go and it's it's like go. a if you ask me it's like a cup of coffee in the morning you know just wakes me up you know i feel good i feel ready to go i'm just it's like man like i'm i'm ready to rock and roll now do you actually drink coffee i do okay but the <laughs> double jolt <laughs> how do you feel about staying in the embassy suites for 11 days a couple days into it now i guess right so. i feel like it's good um just getting the guys together uh having them mesh more. I'm getting to learn stuff about guys that I barely talk to. Like I'm getting to know a lot more about the freshmen, about the transfers. So I think it's really good that we're in there and we're able to fellowship together. Right. So it's football, 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 I guess, right? For the most part in terms of the bonding, obviously you're getting to know your teammates just mm -hmm. said in any other ways too, but I guess your focus is right here. Yeah. That's the whole idea. Straight so. football. And that's what that's how I wanted it to be. Um, and I think Going into camp, we were in a good spot, and I think that we just keep stacking days and we get better and better.
again, it's early, but do you, do you feel that uh, the team, there's a lot of retention that carried over from the spring into the early parts of preseason camp? For sure, I think so. Um, we had a good schedule going into spring and then going into summer camp. Um, so as soon as the transfers got here and the freshmen, we were already rolling, and then they just came right in, and they did a good job of, you know, kind of, kind of getting on top of things. And then from here, we're uh, in camp day two, so I feel like we're moving pretty well. You mentioned the transfers. Obviously, there's a lot of new faces. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody seemed to be a lot of challenges there too, getting yeah. everybody into the mix. What's your impression so far? Uh, a lot of good work across the board. I know for us uh, as O linemen, we got uh, R.J. Perry in there. Mm -hmm. uh, he's done a good job. And then on the other side of the ball, we got Doug Blue Eli and then Bernard Good and all those guys. I think it's going to be good work for us in the box. Um, and then on the outside, we have like receivers and all that type of stuff. I think we I think we did a good job. You know, when there's a tempo offense, the defense is going to try and get different guys in the field. The offensive line can't change your neck up to the uh, up to the scrim at the line of scrimmage. Uh, how is your conditioning and how has it been going as far as putting into practice in practice? It's been going good. Um, you know, first day back, it's always going to be a little struggle, uh, especially with the heat. Um, but I, th I feel like we've done a good job of keeping our pace, keeping our tempo up. Um, and that's a shout out to Coach Gio, too, and his staff. Um, he's done a good job of preparing us through the summer, uh, and putting the right stuff in our bodies and training us the hard way, in the right way. Uh, what's, uh, as far as Golish, as far as uh, Gordon, mm -hmm. what's their communication like with you guys during practice now that you've seen it a couple times? Uh, it's a lot of constructive criticism, which is good. Um, the type of offense we run, you have to be able to take the criticism and then go on to the next play. That's just something he just talked about. Because um, this offense works, it's just you got to be able to take the coaching with a grain of salt and then move on to the next play.